All right, I'm calling to order the regular monthly meeting of the Economic Development Commission, October 5th at 6.33. Um, I will put the agenda up shortly. Um, those of you who went to the website or that I emailed to, you have the agenda in your document. I'll just briefly summarize it, additions or deletions, citizen comments. Um, two old business items, one uh, follow-up discussion on the emergency fund, if there is one, um, a discussion of that. If not, we, you know, we can deal with it next month. And I don't know if there are any child care grant recipients to provide an update, but if there are, um, they can do that uh, then. Then we have five items of new business, um, a preliminary discussion put forward by the housing working group to improve worker housing supply, um, a discussion of the 2024 grant, community grants process, which we typically undertake at our annual meeting early in the year, ideally January. Um, a discussion, and actually just, I might, in the interest of having people who are here who might not need to be here for the other things or want to, um, we might do this um, first, because I think it'll be very brief. Discussion about insurance costs for not-for-profit food vendors on the green. Um, preliminary results of the community survey on tourism and an update on really just the scheduling and logistics of launching the visitor survey and the merchant survey. That's the agenda, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda. John, we Larry and I just had that verbiage to throw out there as a first draft for the sunset clause, if you oh, want to okay. hear it, whenever Great. that comes to the meeting. That's old business. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Can I also speak to people? There's two of us here for the... Sure, we had published it that way. That's fine. Um, sorry, the um, what's the sunset clause? The sunset clause. Yeah. Okay. What is that? That we we discussed last time that that going forward, grants would have a, a explicit oh, sunset clause. Yeah. Okay. Um, hearing no additions or deletions to the agenda, are there any citizen comments? As always, for those of you who've been here before, we take citizen comments relevant to the topics on the agenda when we're discussing them. Assuming we have time, I think we will. We always have. Are there any citizen comments on any other topics? Hearing none. Okay, uh, old business. Follow-up discussion of an emergency fund. At the last meeting, Joe, you and two others were going to- And I think I, I, uh, um, Well, overcommitted myself. Okay. This is the time of the year where there are things you can plan for, or I can plan for, is more work. So, uh, Next next month, I think we'll be able to take care of that. Okay, that's fine. I mean, I think we, until we decide explicitly to establish one, we won't have one. And yeah. there were a good number of people who were, I don't remember who was on which side of that debate, but some, it yeah. wasn't unanimous. It wasn't strongly one way or the other. So right. when we, we'll get to it when we get to it. Sure. Okay. Next month, I, I would uh, anticipate that uh, being taken care of. Things are quiet down enough for us. We can spend some time on it. Okay. Todd, are there any, where did Todd go? Oh, he's on my screen probably. Uh, Todd, are there any, um, are there any childcare updates? Oh, you're muted. No. Okay. Um, sunset clause. Do you want me to put it in the chat um, and then you can read it and I can read it out loud or Larry can read it out loud or what's easiest for you guys? How? Uh, you, why don't you do both? Why don't you put it in the chat? Yeah. And... Okay, Larry, you you cool with that? All right, I'm gonna try to put this in the chat. I'm banned on chatting in the select board, but I think I can do it here. You're not yet. You're not yet banned here. All right. I believe that everybody is banned on the select. Board. All right, cool. So, yeah, the, the, it's still my fault though. But um, all right. So, here we go. <clears throat> Um, Larry and I came up with this first draft. Here we go. Unless otherwise provided by the terms of this grant, any balance not used after one year automatically reverts to the EDC unless an extension request has been received in writing at least 30 days prior to the yearly expiry. Any requests for extensions will be reviewed within 45 days and the decision will be conveyed to the grantee. During the gap of the yearly expiration and the extension review, no funds will be administered until the decision has been made. That was uh, that was it. 
or any comments? Were, weren't we going to add in that we would it would be our responsibility to alert the uh, recipients that, that their time was up? Uh, I don't. I don't know if we just ripped in that, but I put in your preface in there, unless otherwise provided by terms of this grant. I, I have that, but I didn't notice that. But whatever, let's talk about it. What, let's let's talk about what we have here and, and go from there. Either way. Since it's a draft. Larry, you got an, a thing to add in there since it's just a draft? Well, it, I just think that uh, uh, these uh, grant recipients could easily miss that deadline. And it's would uh, if we can just set up a, a, a schedule so that they get... Um, uh, notified in writing. Do we think that should be in the in the initial contract, or it's something we just put on like a calendar at the meeting? What do you, what do you all think about how should they be notified and what mechanism? We we can automate the notification. The the grant manager portal can easily um we, we can easily uh, automate that. Yeah. So Larry, you're saying that just to clarify, you're saying that when we go and make the arrangement and we make the grant documentation, there'll be a date of notification, then John's saying that that can happen automatically through the portal. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a big deal to cut some, you know, cut them off. I And I'd rather, I think I'd feel more comfortable that we'd given them notice. I love it. I think that's a great idea. I, you probably had it and I ignored it. So that's great, <laughs> second time around. Okay, any other comments? Um, yeah. I just had a question. Um, I assume this is for funds that haven't been dispersed. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Funds that are encumbered, meaning we can't give them to anyone else, but they haven't been dispersed. Okay. Which are significant, usually. They're significant. Yeah. Does how much? Have... How, how, how much do? We, how much is there right now? I mean, that, how would if if that was in effect right now, what 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 would that amount to? Uh, I mean, is, well, it, is there like a, a, a? So there's there is a there is a. There is a sunset clause currently. Now, there's not a sunset clause. There's a sunset process, which is me deciding, I think without, because I'm very conservative about it, without any dispute, that something has been sunset. For example, a grant for the 2021 fireworks. Okay. Right? So, so. I'm just curious if, 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 if People just are not using it if they're not. How much? How much of it is not being used? Yeah, I, I could report. Why don't I report back on that at the next at the yeah, next yeah. meeting? It's hunt. It's when you say not being used, it depends. Not being. We've we've recouped about a hundred thousand dollars of funds that were no longer going to be used or no longer could be used by the grantee. Yeah. And right. So that's. I'm just what 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 brings that to mind. You know. It, it, When, when you're in the restaurant business and 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 you start clearing tables and you see that there's, there's a lot of food left on on a lot of plates, you say to yourself automatically, "We're giving them too much." So I'm wondering if we're giving them too much, and if we are, you know, there's something we should think about. Yeah, I, 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 why don't we do this? I'm ha why don't we w once we've adopted this? Why don't we put on the agenda for the next meeting a review of the grants that have were for which we've recovered and we can decide. I don't think that that's the case. That, that that's the case, but I think I shouldn't be the only one looking at it, which is why having a sunset clause came up. Okay. So why don't I bring the data and we can look that at that? I, I don't think there'll be a big dispute historically. Okay. Um, and this sunset clause will eliminate any dispute going forward. Good. John, that's that's also something that's going to be looked at when I'm doing the reviews. So right. you know that's data that we're going to be coming up with monthly. Going forward, we'll have a better sense of it yeah. even before the sunset clause takes effect. Right. Can I just, if there, is, are there any other comments? I have a quick comment about this. Did you consider, Larry and Todd, did you consider a different time frame, like 18 months instead of 12 months? No, we just made this up and felt comfortable with it. But it's all, it's all, let's talk about any, any, any time frame, really. What do you guys think? Well, actually, can I withdraw my suggestion for today? Because I think actually looking at the data of the grants that have been closed by me will give us a good sense of what that is. And and so I would be in, I would be comfortable with this personally with this language for twelve months now. But I might looking at when we all look at the data, I might want to change it or propose a change. The the reason we we started it with um, 
uh, the uh, the quibble part of it was that I think it should we should discuss this with each uh, uh, yeah. grant recipient at the time the grant is made and say is a year long enough? Um, you know the fireworks would obviously is six months, but no, no, two, we need two years. Okay, well then, you know I, I yeah that's right, Larry. I, yeah. I think we're gonna we're gonna get a varying uh, timeline. The but sort of the, we just throw in one year so that we have yeah. an absolute to deal with. The spirit of it is depending on what the project is and what we approve and how it's doled out. Like Bridgewater childcare is going to take longer than the WCCC, for example. So that that's right. The year came and just sort of getting it out in that way. Yeah, but, but Todd, but Todd, wouldn't that that phrase that you have in there about a thirty day um, notification? In other words, if if somebody gets notified, you know, in thirty days, it's gonna it, it's gonna sunset, and and the recipient would be able to say, well, can we have another six months? Can we? Have yeah, another- yeah, you're you're right. That's if everybody just was a year, they would all get that notification. And they'd all write and back. They'd have the year. opportunity to say, no, we need a little bit more time. That's and that's a good, a good point. Yeah, it's okay, a good so point. I think- yeah, so so I'm fine with the language as it is. Uh, Roger, and then just, but you know, quick, quick, quick insert, Larry. You, do you want to suggest how to insert that we'll notify them in that verbiage, or is that not necessary? And we'll just do that, John. I think we should. I think we we should be obliged to to do it, and might as well just say so. All right, fine with that. Yeah. Someone okay, smarter than me. Right. All right, Roger, go ahead. Can I suggest that you explicitly? language here, the recognition that some of these are multi or are designed and, and have been awarded as multi-year projects. So that people in reading it don't think that they right. have spent it right. in one. So I you know I think it's it's just another clause in there. Right. Does that Todd did you are you you and Larry comfortable with that? Yeah. Okay. The more clarity with simplicity in the verbiage, the the better. That's the point. I think it's great. Great great Larry, what do you think? I thought that was a good idea of Rogers. I didn't. I didn't hear it, but Roger's ideas are usually good. Yeah, right. most of the time. So yeah. I'm going to suggest then, to Todd, why don't you just make those revisions, and we'll vote on this next month. Um, All right, John. Can I make one comment? Sure, Patrick. Go ahead. Uh, his language says, unless specifically specified, uh, I think I'd keep the language really simple and let people put, add a question to your to your grant process of how long. And let people choose that and then that might be the easier way to do it than to make this you know lots of gobbledygook keep this simple i, I like how simple this is uh and if somebody is going to do a grant you can if you want you can even have one year 18 months two year you know as a check well, I, don't, I don't think i don't think we're going to I, I, well, we're going to come and talk about the community grant process i think we can just add that we can just agree now to add that question to the to the grant application. Um, oh, yeah. How long kind of, do you think you'll need to encumber the funds? Yeah, that's a great idea. That kind of automatically, I don't think anyone's going to look at this language, but us looking back at it to make yeah. sure that we're adhering to it. We're, it's not like we're going to be sending it out to everybody. Uh, I mean, we'll put it in the grant agreement, but um, but th- by that point in time, the grant agreement doesn't happen until after the grants are approved. And so by that point in time, they will already have had a discussion with us about how long it would have taken. So. I think as a practical matter, it 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 will all work the way you're suggesting, Patrick. Yeah, and you could put it in the in the application form. Right. I mean, exactly. yeah. that's what I think we should plan to do. Yeah, cool. Okay. All right. Great. So, Todd, you'll come back to us with the final language next month, um, yep. and talk about the this. We're going to talk about the grants process in a minute. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, okay. Any other anything else on this? No. All right. Uh, new business preliminary discussion of an idea to improve worker housing availability. Trina's online and I'm here. Um, can we assume that you've all read what was in the packet? Okay. So we're not here to talk about the details. We're here to talk about the general idea, make sure that we're all aligned. And if we are, then we plan to take the concept to the select board to make sure that we're all moving in the right direction. This proposal will incur quite a lot of um, Trina's time and lawyer's time because it's not so easy as it sounds. But I don't think that the housing working group should go to the EDC, who should go to the select board. I think the EDC should go to the select board. If it's an, it, I realize that the funding, for the proposal for this 
anyway, I, I just saying I, I don't want to set that precedent necessarily, but okay. I do think that this is this doesn't involve EDC funding. So no. Um, and so the only reason we would go to the select board is because they asked originally for um, they asked us to investigate something, and so we have investigated. So we'd like to give them an answer. No, we, that can come from the. And we should. I think it's the, the, the actual. Okay. So, do you have any questions, or do you want me to go through this basically? Well, can I just state my understanding of it? Maybe that yes. will, because will, I suspect my understanding of it isn't quite right. But that fundamentally that um so the question that the select board asked us just as a reminder was what about existing landlords um in other words we have an incentive roger decides to build an adu he's he gets an incentive to add a new adu to this thing jill has all along had an adu she doesn't get anything um that struck some members of the select board or some some constituents of the select board and therefore some members of the select board as unfair to the people who already have it um without opining on that that's what happened um and so this proposal is to is to provide tax relief to those who have it two two parts tax relief to people who are already renting a, a unit to workers to local workers and tax relief to people who are building an adu and therefore improving the value of their property and about to get an extra property tax, a bill which diminishes the value of the grant we gave them in the first place. So two parts to right. it. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, that's that's the idea. Yes, and this we're we're talking about using um, a method that is well used in different parts of the country. And is used in Vermont currently for commercial properties, property development. But we want to talk to a lawyer to make sure that the statutes that we have allow us to do what we do and get the process very clear. One of the, just I have one more question and then I'll, please anyone jump in. But the your memo suggested that the method that you want to investigate and confirm allows for the town to reduce the property tax without placing the extra burden of that property tax on the remaining uh, taxpayers. Well, that's true for the ADU because that's a new property. So the property tax has never been charged. So you're not um, asking anybody to take on something else. But with an existing property, you might be, you would be asking people to take on, you'd just be asking everybody else in the town to take on a share yeah. of people already, people um, providing, I'm sorry, existing yeah. landlords. Right. Okay. Yes. I, 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 the memo needs to, might, maybe should be cleared up on, well, maybe I just misread it, but if, if just take another look, or I'll take another look at it. Okay. So, so any other thoughts as we go forwards investigating this? Right. Just a quick question. I mean, I know you, you're investigating or asked to anyway, but um, do, do we have a sense of whether there are people for whom um, renting at this reduced rate is a burden and who this would prevent them from taking the rental unit off the market at that discount? Yes. Rate? Yeah. So so this is actually, you know, on the one hand, we're, extent, we're, we're adding capacity, and this is actually preventing reduction of capacity. Yes, and and I, I don't think you know whether, it's certainly getting more expensive to be a landlord, and you don't know whether people are threatening that or really ready to do that. Are there any other comments? So it, specifically, the first thing that would happen is, is illegal, is expenditure in your allocated funds for legal costs. Yes. Okay, and that's built into your yes, and and to ask your other to answer to go backwards your other question about uh, if there is there a way to recompense landlords without having everybody else pay the tax you could we could give a grant for the difference who's the we the uh, the, what, the EDC okay. we could use the EDC grants for the difference rather than put it tax right. Bill. Right. In other we words, got, we got one of your suggestions about how to solve this issue or address the issue. Uh, I don't. It, it is not, it's not in the memo. In the, the memo, it suggests funding this 
that the town that that the town we actually haven't we haven't gone as far as that we've only gone as far as reduce the property taxes for landlords renting property long term to local workers at or below the rent rates we haven't suggested how it's done well there is, i believe legally there's only one way to do it I, I believe you'll have to confirm it which is that everyone else the state has figured this out the state has basically said you can you can give whatever tax exemptions you want to but somebody else would but, but, but Woodstock is going to pay the amount but it could be Woodstock EDC correct oh, of course you know somebody has to yeah. pay so you suggested that the EDC would pick up the they're not suggesting we're not suggesting any of those things but we have thought about different alternatives oh, okay. where you oh, ask every taxpayer to contribute right. where you ask the EDC to fund it okay yeah. so so Basically, the select board's authorized to create some property tax stabilization or exemptions for the municipality. And is that a direction that we would be interested in going to solve this problem? Well, I, so I have an I have a opinion about this, a strong opinion about how to fund it, and and a less strong opinion, but still an opinion about whether to do it. But can we go to your opinion about whether to do it or not first? Because that's going to say whether we go forward to the work yeah well i think our objective is to increase the supply of workforce housing and there's no question that building a new unit of housing increases the supply of workforce housing that's unambiguous we are certain 100 percent that when we give our incentive we will increase the supply of housing we have no idea and no way of assessing whether or not giving an incentive to an existing landlord uh, to not stop doing it is, is going to achieve the objective because we have no idea and there is no way to know whether or not the landlord would take it off the market if we, if we don't give the incentive. If we had to guess, given that it's on the market, and not only do we not have any way of verifying it or knowing whether we're achieving our objective, but if you had to guess with no other information, you would assume that we were not achieving our objective since the unit is on the market. And the increase has already been established and the landlord has already paid it and not taken it off the market. So you follow what I'm saying? John, I think you're attacking the wrong issue. We're not here to argue about whether to fund. We're actually here because we want to go and answer the select board. And so how about if we went to the select board with the idea that we as an EDC don't want to put our grants here because of what you said. Oh, yeah. There is another way to do this. Yeah, exactly. No, that's exa oh, oh, no. How about that? Absolutely. No, that's that's where I would come out. It's, okay, good. I don't yes. believe, it might have, the select board might not have an a, might have a, a different objective than increasing the supply right. of workforce housing. I would be fine which with which that. might be maintaining this or or placate yes, maintaining the supply. Call it what you will. I think that for us, to, that's not what I would call it, maintaining the supply, but one could. You're right. Right. So, so, so I think that what we can be pure about, if if we as an EDC agree, is what the EDC wants to do, and but we do have an obligation to go to the select board to answer their question. So, so now, by the way, I, I, I it is possible that giving an incentive to an existing landlord would prevent the reduction of supply. I mean, that is possible. It's not absurd. But I think that given the success- Why? That, you would just say, I'm not gonna build it? No, no not build it. It's, no, no. But we're talking about somebody who's already renting. Yeah. There are several yeah. people who are already renting yeah. and renting at below market rates yeah. and working hard to keep that. And every time property taxes go up, electricity prices go up, they, they, they many, many the people say, yeah, they take the hit. what am I doing? Yeah. So what they might do is they might say, I'm going to renovate this and I'm going to charge market rates. And we'll, we'll... I mean, yeah. the whole the whole the whole notion of going back and price fixing the past, I find very hard to swallow. It's not how fair market economy works. It's not it's not this based. In, hard, it's not. Hard. Let me finish, please. I'm speaking. It's yeah. not based on reality because I could be renting below market to Matt Lombard's workers because I'm really good friends with Matt and I think he's fantastic. And then Matt gives me free restaurant meals at Santi, but I'm going to get a uh, tax credit for it. Like there's so much subjectivity and, and area of gray where there isn't in just straight up the other programs we have, the other great successful programs you guys have implemented that say, here is what we paid. 
and it gave us a new this. And that's that's where I struggle to go and connect the dots on on giving people who already bought a car a tax discount after they already paid the tax for their Vermont registration or whatever. So, what, 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 so Todd is not arguing that we don't go to the, the, the select board. He's not, not at all. arguing the second part of it, which is what is the EDC's stance on this approach? Right, but Correct. I'd like to question your fair market economics. Fair sure. market economics has got us into this mess. We're in a mess. Economics don't work. We have to we have to interrupt economics. That's what we're trying to do. I mean, that's your opinion that economics don't work. That some economists well, will say this, some economists will say that. Like you can't. I I respect your opinion, but you're not an I expert. Don't, I'm not economy. sure that you. I'm not sure you can argue well, about the lack of supply of houses. And economics is all about supply and demand. Oh, we have greater demand than supply. Well, I think that I think the question the, the question is not. I think that this is actually. The question is, the EDC's objective is to increase the exactly. Workforce. There could the, the the I think we have shown we've shown that the approach we've taken to incent new construction is is working. Right. If that wasn't the case, personally, I would be I might be more willing to think about incenting people to not reduce it without any, in other words, I might be more willing to do this, but we have an approach that we can put dollars to, and I don't see any end to to wanting to fund that. I would put as many dollars as we can afford into an approach where we know for certain that if we give Roger $10,000, we've added, we've helped it, to add. It's the effort. most successful thing that we've done, yeah. I think. It's right. so, so solid. So therefore, right. I, I would... think that the whole point of, or not the whole point, but part of this is to actually keep building upon that. Because one of the common themes is that I, we give an incentive grant to build an accessory dwelling unit, and then that money is pretty much washed away by the property tax increase. So how do the, how do these people still come up where they're you know? But their value of the home has increased as well when they had that ADU. There's that's that's like yeah, there is. You just but got there's an a very easy um, it, it, statute. It, your house used to be worth three hundred thousand dollars. Now it's worth a million. But the club wants you to pay another five thousand. People have a nervous breakdown. Like looking at the economic well, yeah. as wait, a wait, whole. Wait. When you but add that unit on, thought, you're really increasing your... So there's some very easy statutes that are out there, tax exemption statutes that are out there that the municipality, quite frankly, is not using that could at least give somebody uh, a little bit of a break on their property tax. And when I'm saying a break, like the one that's out there, would give you would make it, if the town voted to do so, the person who built the ADU could at least get 75000 worth of property assessment off so it's like a reduction. They get five hundred dollars a year. You know, it, it's not much. But if they've constructed something within a twelve-month period of the vote, then you could do this in statute by th for three years. And I mean, just that little bit could help somebody. They can pay for their copain for a month. I, you know, I don't know. You know what I mean? So Sorry. there's some small fundamental steps that could happen here with the support of the select board of taking this on. Yeah. Between, I think you're mixing up. Two, you, you've got two proposals. Which are actually fundamentally different, and I would suggest that you make the two you separate the two proposals. They sound like they're the same because they're both using property taxes as a as a report. Well, my focus is on adding new units. The select board wants to incentivize landlords, but the EDC doesn't want to supplement the grants for that. So I think we have our answer. We just have to say no, right? No, no, no I think you're misunderstanding quite considerably. <laughs> um, that you have two proposals. Yes. One so is right. Right. One is for the select board to uh, what's it called when you set aside the tax? Reduce? Uh, tax stabilization. No, no. Uh, tax abatement. Abatement. To abate the increase in property taxes. for Now, the abatement's years. after the tax. It's not the right term. It's tax stabilization or tax exemption. Fine. Exemption. Okay. A tax exemption. The first approach is to provide a tax exemption to someone who's building a new unit. Correct. That, that, is, that is exactly what we are doing, using different words. And I think asking the proposing that the town add to our incentive, which will presumably one would assume if they, or if they think that will accelerate the increase of, of the increase of supply of new construction, then they should do that. The okay. second, one second, the second, right. you're next. The, the second proposal is to provide, is to provide a tax exemption for people who already have existing properties. And that I think is a less effective vehicle because of the significant uncertainty. And so I would just like, when we propose this, and it's fine with me if the housing, I mean, as long as EDC comes along, 
but the housing working group present that both of those proposals that we just say that the EDC is, I would say, comfortable with the first one. It achieves our objectives where we think we're already achieving the objectives. We think you would probably achieve more if the town added their funds to it. That would be great. On the second proposal, we don't feel that it supports our objective of increasing supply. Uh, but the way, but in answer to their question, this is how they could, this is how they could do it. And I would specify that it would be a tax abatement that that the town would then or I'd just specify that it would be a tax abatement. And if you have a tax abatement, then then the person who pays for that is clear. So Joe. And they may love that idea and that's great if they do. Right. Exactly. So well I, I have a very simple question and, and and I'm a little embarrassed at its simplicity because I um, mean it just um uh, divorces itself from this all this creativity that's going on around me. But I'm just curious. Um, would the, the increase in taxes that the property owner would experience, would it be so great if it was passed on to the tenant that it would discourage a tenant from renting that apartment? In other words, if the taxes go up $500 for the year, that's 10 bucks a week. Is that going to be so much that it's going to discourage somebody from renting the apartment if, going, if the if the rent goes up that much? Well, remember that we're fixing the rent. Well, I'm fixing. Yeah, but we then have it defeats the amount. object of the exercise because we're trying to fix rents that. So we. You know what I'm saying? Well, go I mean, back to the, passing yeah, our, to the big passing bucks. To the, is it going to be? I don't. I'm not saying. I, well, I, 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 let me take that back. Is the amount that you we pass on to the tenant so great that they say, no, it's too much, you can't afford it? Well, right now, tenants That's a very are simple question, I know. saying yes to much higher rent than yeah. they would normally pay. I, th I think that the point of this discussion is the proposal isn't clear enough, and we better go back and rewrite it to make it clear so that there's not all of the, so well, many pretty clear. We just go up and rent a few bucks. Well, I sorry. I think that the, the yeah. What, what I like. Sorry, I don't know which of the two proposals you're talking about, Joe. But if you're if you're talking about the one where we provide incentives, where there there would the be the one that's already built, right? So I the, the, there are so he's saying there there are no for me there are no numbers that would justify. Sorry, for me. Providing a financial incentive, no matter who provides it, to an existing landlord to not stop being an existing landlord is a much less effective way of achieving our objective. And therefore, I would not put a penny against that. We have an obligation to yes. answer the select board's question. I would put the penny against the, 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 the uh, other, which is to absolutely. But what Joe's question was about the proposal to incent existing landlords. Yeah. That does not achieve our objective. I would not support any. I would not put support any funds from the EDC to go towards that because that's not our objective. No, However, okay. I, so an answer to Joe's question, and that that's back I to my original comment wait, that wait, we've already wait, said no. Wait, we should wait, do this. Wait a minute, Trina. One second, Jill, and then and then Trina. Right. So, Joe, in answer to your question, yes. this isn't about giving people tons of money. This is about showing some appreciation. I think. Because we, we could only be we could only be talking about a few thousand, not very much money, right? So, um, we, one of the things we'll do is work out more. Yeah, but I thought the whole objective was not the whole objective just to provide housing for workers. No, yeah. it's to increase the supply of housing for workers. Okay, yeah. I think that's no, no, that's what when we say housing for workers. That's what we mean. We, yeah. We've had that. To, we're we're all. Sorry, one second. The Trina, Trina first, and then and Patrick's also had his hand up. Yeah, forward. I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but I, sorry. I just feel like we've we've answered the question about the EDC funds being used for current landlords, and I think the answer has been that we do not want to do that. That That's the EDC doesn't support that, and that we support the building of new units. But so I'm I, I'm trying to figure out why we. They're still circling the drain on that topic. Because, Trina, because the select board, because we owe the select board two things. One is a proposal, and two is our opinion about the proposal. 
And so yeah. we, we can't, I don't think we, they asked us, how would you, could, would you please develop a program to incent existing landlords? Okay. So You've done that. Them. We would, I think we also owe them our opinion about that proposal, which is. Our, and our answer was to use tax stabilization because you don't want to use EDC funds for them. So where else is the money going to come from? It's not Trina. It's that it's that as a fundamental thing right. from the EDC, it's not something that I believe we all agree on. That that's that's the thing. It's but you answering their question is important, and you may have an idea that they love, and that's great. Yeah. But saying whether or not we support that particular aspect of it is just what we're talking about. So right. we we support things that clearly increase new housing supply, whether the funds come from the town or or Santa Claus or the EDC, we want new housing supply. We, at least myself and John, clearly struggle with the other part of the proposal, which we're saying separate them into two. But but you still need to bring it to the select board your best shot to give them their, they can do what they want, right? I think that's so, great. So Susie, uh, sorry, Patrick, sorry, Susie, then Patrick, and then I don't know your name, sorry, Jen, Joanne. And then we'll, uh, I think, then we'll try to conclude. Susie, Patrick, Joanne. I can't can't hear Susan. Can't hear. Just hold that. So I know that Joe, uh, one of um, there was a a young a young man who lived um, in an apartment close to um, uh, the high school, and he lost his apartment. Uh, because the landlord wanted to turn it into an Airbnb. And so he then went over, he moved with his girlfriend over to Windsor. And personally, I think he's at a risk. We are at a risk of losing a, a, um, a worker and it's hard to find workers. And so I think that if you, if she provided, if, if she had an incentive to keep him, would that, you know, have, you know, because we lost the workers' housing to an Airbnb. Would this incentive combat that, that horrible trend? Uh, Patrick, and then Joanne. I, I, I've got two, two things. Yes. One is, uh, do we understand why the select board asked this question? Uh, yes. I mean, yes. Uh -huh. yes. Can, can you, because... Is it just because they thought it was unfair or or I, people I, came to them and and brought it up and so they brought it up to us. Okay, so people and that, that was also brought up in light of the fact that we were wanting to extend a little bit past our Woodstock borders. To, Bridgewater, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so that was no bueno unless we did something for the existing landlords. Okay. The whole thing was insane, in my opinion. We well, we got I, side I, we I got side we got Bridgewater got killed because of this part. All right. Yeah, I would agree that with 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 John and Todd that uh, it's it's about creating new, uh, and you know you if you open this gate, uh, you're going down a bad path because you're but, not going backwards. Okay, so <laughs> there's so lots of people. So Patrick, to answer that, if it comes from taxes, then it's not coming from EDC grants. But we do there is something we have to stop. We have lost one new already. There are other people who are considering this. No, I can tell you this as a as a former lodging owner, uh, somebody's going to go to Airbnb because they think they can make more money, and anybody who's doing that, it's because they think they can make more money. It has nothing to do with uh, workforce housing or having a thing. They're they're looking solely for the purpose of making more money because that's the reason. So, you, that's the reason so, you go to short term rental. So if you give them money, they have less incentive to do it. You're only going to get enough money. money. It's not enough money. You make a ton of money. So hold, hold, hold on, hold on. Sorry, Joanne, you're next. So it's, Roger, can you give her the little? Oh, yeah. Here you go. So my question is, what prevents landlords from just saying, I'm not going to provide workforce housing. I'm going to provide an apartment for somebody who has enough money to live here. Nothing. And nothing. And that's been the problem. I've moved out Saturday will be six times in four years. Yeah. Okay, it's not it's not sustainable. And the so, the so, right. the so, yeah the solution yeah the solution to not enough housing, in my opinion, is more housing. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Need more development. Need more housing. More housing. More housing. More housing. More housing. That's right. But in any event. But I want to protect. So we don't all agree because I think you also have to protect the housing you've got. And we have no problem with Woodstock 
pursuing that. And I think that we have an obligation to give them an idea for how to pursue it. But you'd have to- you, But is that but, our responsibility? Let, let, me, let me put it differently. I, until, until we find that the dollars that we spend on incenting new units are no longer effective, I will always prefer to, because every penny that we spend to, to incent an, an existing landlord is a penny we do not spend to incent new construction. So I'm actually not saying that we should or shouldn't, I'm not currently saying that we should or shouldn't give existing landlords an incentive. What I'm saying is until the new build incentives prove to be ineffective, yeah. we should spend our money on our limited funds on that. All of, if as much as we need to, that's really the argument that I'm making now. So I'm kicking down the road, the question of whether or not it's okay. appropriate to and spend money. I'm kicking it down just for two months to the, till we come to you with next year's proposal. Uh, and we look at what money has gone and what money we haven't managed to. No, but I would I would allocate more money to the new to the new build program. And those, there's nobody coming. There's nobody extra coming who we can't. There's nobody coming who we can't fund. Okay. All right. Well, that's will be interesting, Roger. Yeah. Less less comment, Roger, and then okay. we'll... Yeah. I just this is very quick. Um, oh man. A tax abatement for essentially taking away the rise in property values for for building a new unit is revenue neutral to the town. It's a no brainer. Um, and you know, I, it's obviously not the, the EDC can, can recommend it or not recommend it. It's revenue neutral yeah. to the town, not to the taxpayers. But they're not arguing. No, no, it's just a deference. It's a deference of that improvement being okay, applied to the assessment. It's to be clear. there's no when loss. We're, when we're talking about ADU, yeah. all have the same opinion. Right. We agree. Yeah, all new units. No, and I and that's why I'm saying if you go yeah. to the town and propose to the select board and propose that there be a tax abatement that offsets the rise in property value for someone having built an ADU. Oh yeah, that's, I think that's yeah we that's, we agree. That's a no brainer. That's, that's we agree. We now, all agree the, with that. The Roger, other question the... is yeah. what if the EDC decides, and I and I think it seems like the spirit is against deciding to do this to give people an incentive to maintain, uh, an EDC incentive to maintain existing units, that goes on for the rest of history. You've encumbered that money forever. Trina, there's a time limit, isn't there, Trina? I don't know, you, it, they'd have to keep the rent, yeah. presumably. But then they're just gonna yeah. raise it when they don't get that incentive anymore. Usually Look, with I exemptions think... and stabilization, there's gonna be a time limit on it, a beginning and an end. But the whole idea of the, um, Statute 3836, which is pretty much just a deference of the improvement, which is the new ADU value being assessed and for three years, you kind of put it on hold and then it ratchets it up. Okay, so I think, Jill, your comment earlier, if I can draw this to a close, is, is why don't you come back to us next month with, with taking all of this into account and clarify what it is that you, what, oh, sorry, Marion, go ahead, Marion. It's, it's, it's just a quick thought because, um, because we're not deciding today and we have some time to think about it. I just, it, it feels very parallel to me to the idea of like hiring new people versus retaining employees. And there might be some efficiencies. And I think it's worth thinking about whether keeping housing maybe costs less than building new housing. And what I, I, I would, I don't know the answer, but I'm just saying, since we're not voting on this now, it's something for us to think about. I, I have no problem with the EDC rethinking our, our housing objectives. No problem with that at all. I just feel like I think maybe I'm interpreting the history wrong. I think our objective was to increase the supply. So, so I. Yeah. So may we go to the select with with all of those revised in the, um, in the next Sooner. few weeks because if we want to take this forward. We actually need something on the ballot. Oh, sure. Okay, if the timing makes a difference, then then fine. It's so we could, but we we go with we wouldn't go with this because it's too confusing. We'll make it clearer and just reflect the discussion. I think yeah. if you reflect the discussion here, yeah. we'll get the. I think we'll start to get the lawyer involved to find out how complicated this is or not, and uh, and then yeah. we'll know. We'll Does anyone have a problem with that with that um, approach? No, as long as everyone understands that we support new housing without a discussion, you know, we're on new housing and reimbursing existing townsfolk who have local workers is something that we would need to discuss if we were to get on board 
as long as that's clear, then I think, of course, we trust you to Jill and Trina to go and work with John and go up there and do your thing. I, I, I do. But we know that we're deferring another discussion. If, if you want if you want us to support the second part of that. Yeah. Something that we might... about. Yes. Yes. Say it again. What to be talking about for next year. Okay. At fine. least we'll know what the discussion is about. Yeah, fine. Good. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. You Thanks. know what? Ar if arguing about more housing equals more housing, then this is the best arguing we've ever done. So right. this is good stuff, you know, and we appreciate okay. we appreciate you. your work. <laughs> yes. Yeah, All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 20, uh, 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Trina. Thanks, Trina. Thanks, Joe. Thank 20, you. Joe. Thanks, Trina. 2024 Thank community grants process. Um, it's time to launch the process. I, I put forward a a proposal that we simply keep the process the same. It sounds like with the exception of adding a question of how long do you think you would need to spend the funds or whatever, something like that. No, no, uh, well, the, 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 the sunset wouldn't be part of the application. Are, are we, part the of the item is the... Oh, it's the, the next item. I have, it out of the, I have it in the wrong order. Sorry, my memo is not in the same order as the agenda. Sorry, Joanne, we can do yours then. Insurance costs for not-for-profit food vendors. The... Um, the village trustees have uh, have um, asked a, a number of not-for-profit vendors to, and a for-profit vendor, or one, I think, to come onto the green during days where their food supply is limited in town. Um, for the not-for-profit organizations, the cost of the, they, they don't make a lot of money and the cost, and Joanne is going to tell us a little bit about it, but the cost is of the insurance kind of is a fixed cost and all of a sudden now it doesn't make sense for them. So the village trustees have asked if we would subsidize the cost of insurance, which is five for the eight days or to eight or 10 days of cost is $535 in total. Um, and yes. so, so we'll just Joanne has waited patiently here to just tell her, us about this. So just take two minutes and give us a quick update. And are you, do you have the little pod? Roger, can you, sorry, we open it. By the way, that microphone's working great. Hi, I'm Joanne, the administrative assistant at North Chapel, the North Universalist Church down the street. And um, one of the trustees approached me about knowing that we are trying to fundraise for North Chapel for all of the programs that we provide and asked if we were interested in doing this as a fundraiser for North Chapel. Um, four days later, I heard from her that we may have this cost that would be attached to this. This is the first time that we're doing it. We don't know what our income will be on a daily basis because of the weather and everything else. And so we are asking for your assistance in covering these costs. Okay. And there are other organizations, you're just representing Seton asked you to come, asked a couple, you know, as many, asked some of the vendors. Asked to come, and but I'm here too. Hey. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I apologize. I have a question about that. Is it possible to um to put a couple of these vendors together under one um policy? Or do, does each separate each one have to have a separate policy? I mean, if they're willing to share. So if they have a bunch of tables under, you know, like a collective the challenge of would be is it needs to go under an organization. So that would mean that if somebody chokes on a piece of pie from yeah. a PTO, then that means that the church is now liable for choking on the pie, right? Like I don't think right. you want to assume someone else's liability. Sure. Uh Joe, what what about what about they just come to uh, they all come under the umbrella of the chamber and the chamber is reimbursed or given money for the insurance of all of them. And the chamber can, you know, they can go to the chamber and say, okay, we made 500 bucks. They give it to the chamber, the chamber gives it to whatever organization that is fundraising and the whole, the whole group of you, whether it be on Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday or multiple weeks, is all covered under one and both because it's under the auspices of the chamber. Yeah. Um, honestly, I wish we had talked about this beforehand, 
I I was speaking with. Oh wait, Beth. Well, Beth, Beth. Finish. 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 Excuse me. Sorry. First of all. You're muted again. Oh no, Beth. There's You're muted again, Beth. Computer. We're gonna now? bring in a lip reader. Yeah. We're gonna bring uh, in a lip reader. Now? Yeah. Now. Yes. Okay. Um, the church has insurance. There can't be any nonprofits that don't have. I, I would find it difficult to believe that any organization with a board of directors and or trustees or deacons, whatever you call church people doesn't have insurance and all you do is call your insurance company and ask them to add the, the town or village as additionally insured it there is no extra cost to that i just had a conversation with our insurance agent um today yesterday actually um so it's it's um, the town of Woodstock would be named as additionally insured with a waiver of sub subrogation, excuse me, Larry, um, on a primary non-contributory basis. I, I, I'm not opposed. I mean, I support the church. They're, they're a member. We would be happy if they had come to us to have applied for this permit for them. And John and I, or Seton and I spoke quickly about this. Members can fall under our insurance if you need to, but it would be hard for me to believe that the church doesn't have insurance. What if somebody falls up the step? Of course we in? have insurance. I just don't know enough about it. Um, oh. You just you know you just need to call your insurance company yeah. and ask them to ask the town to to add the town as additionally insured. Okay. Honestly, could, could I make a suggestion that 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 Seton maybe? Um, well, I'm not sure who to direct this to, but I, I don't. I, this to me, you know, we're about to have a discussion about the preliminary results of the community uh, survey. It's not going to surprise anyone that a lack of places to eat is one of the issues that is coming up. In fact, it's the issue that is most concerning to lack people. Sorry? The lack of what? Of places to eat oh, yeah. is, is it most concerning. Therefore, this becomes, I think, something that the EDC, I don't know whether we would want to address it or not. It depends on how much it would cost. But for $535, you know, for the next three weeks, that's yeah. something that we ought to approve. So I would propose that we just go ahead, despite what Beth said, but that we ask Seton and, or whoever you'd like to delegate it to, to just continue to investigate that suggestion. And if you don't spend the $535 or some of it, that you just only ask, you know, so we would approve a, a grant of up to $535. And, yeah. so, and just to add into that, to, to give you a full picture. So we obviously have the, the North Chapel, they're going to be there for several dates. Um, and John, I sent you, um, yeah. I sent you a memo and I don't know if you want to share that or I can share it on my screen about what the, the breakdown is. So we've got North Chapel, but then we also have two PTO or a, a PTO and then the Wood, and then the Woodstock High School um, Spanish. Yeah, it, doesn't it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The total is, the total is- Yeah, no, but the, the point is that the PTOs and that the hockey boosters, the schools will not allow them to use their insurance. So they they cannot get their, they do not have their own insurance. That, All right, so, so that's not an option for them. Do you want to make a motion, John? Yeah, so I would I would do five thirty five for everything. Total five thirty five. Yeah. So they're eighty dollars. So I would move that that the EDC allocate up to up to five hundred thirty five dollars to pay for the organizations that Seton submitted in her memo. Uh, yeah, actually, not currently covered. The, and that but that no, and that Seton would uh would work with any of organizations for whom Beth's idea might be possible yeah. to see whether or not they can be covered under their own institution. If they can, we would ask that you make a good faith effort to reduce our costs, but we will allocate the money so that they can go ahead and, you know, and plan for this food service. Second. Second. Are there any discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Okay. Seton, is that, uh, sorry, I should have asked before we voted. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. And I can follow up with, uh, with Joanne and Beth. Okay, Feed great. the people. Feed the people or they get angry. All right. Thank you. Go. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 2024 community grants process. Uh, it, it, does it, I guess maybe the easiest way to say this is, does anyone want to suggest a change other than adding the question that we talked about earlier? Otherwise, I think we could, there's some little bit of technical work. We just have to change some dates. Um, we do need to announce a schedule, which we should talk about briefly. Um, but I think the first step would be to open up, open it up for applications um, and to remind ourselves, this is, we can always change this, but to remind ourselves that we said we would be reducing we, 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 a three-year runway, you know, down so that last year we did 100,000. We actually granted 97, I think. This year we talked about reducing it to 70,000. Well, we decided to reduce it to 70,000 subject to our overturning that. So, um, and I don't know that we need to discuss or debate that tonight. I think actually a better time to do it would be either at the annual meeting or just before. But I think what we need to do today is: Are we ready to? Are people do? Are there any suggested changes to the process we used last year? Does anybody have any? Okay, good. Uh, I, Mike and I are both new and have not done the annual meeting like that, so I'm not really sure what the process was. Okay, that really at this stage, so the process was that last year was really just an application. And then an annual meeting where we review all of the applications at once and make decisions as to which grants to provide. Uh, at this stage, what we're really deciding is, is just the application. And we have a, an automated tool. Uh, all we do at this point, we have to change the dates on the tool. It has to say 2024, whatever. Um, but other than that, um, uh, we just announced that the applications are open. I would just use the same verbiage we used last year to announce it. Um, it's early October. I would guess that by October 15th, we could announce this. Uh, if we wanted to have the annual meeting before the end of January, um, then October 15th, people would have, and we could ask them to submit the applications by sure. December 15th or December 20th. And we could have our meeting three weeks later. The only the only thing is that this is ridiculous, but can we have the meeting not in Jan? Can we have it in February? Maybe the reason I say is because there was no snow last year, and it takes a whole weekend. And this year it's going to snow like crazy, and I really want to go skiing. Go skiing, and and well, I'll miss you, Todd. Won't we, guys? I'm just saying we've had it later than January before. It might have been to this rodeo. How, how did you preface that statement? This is ridiculous. Well, everything I say I is ridiculous. But, but does anyone like February? For the future, Tom, by the way, you don't need to preface your statements with this is ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I missed all the good it's stuff. A little big. Uh, the, I think is it does anyone have a I, it's you know oh. does anyone have any comments? About that, about the scheduling yeah, of think, the annual meeting. I, have, I think Todd should go skiing anytime he wants to. Let's have a meeting when we always do. We only did it in January one out of the last three years. We could do it in February if someone wants to. But it's I just, think we did it later just because we were we were behind the ball. I think for most people, trying to get it done earlier is better. Yes, Michael, did you want to say something? Yeah, no, I'm just. I think. I think I'm one of the only members or the only member that's actually gone through the process from the other side. Um, yeah. from it. So I've been trying to like reflect on from an applicant's perspective, what was missing. Um, I think the number one critique I had for it was the lack of ability to communicate at that uh, annual meeting as a applicant or really much like time to give and take before the, that meeting. Um, and so from my perspective, the conversation kind of like drifted and meandered and went into like not the spirit or the heart of the grant for my application. And I could have given some like answered some questions that people were circling around, but didn't know the obvious answer because there wasn't the opportunity to engage the applicant in it. Um, 
So just my feedback to the process. I, I, I'm sure this has been discussed and debated in the past. So I hope I'm not, I'm, I'm tipping through a graveyard a little bit, no, no, no. Um, but yeah. I think it's very helpful. Susie? Um, wasn't, wasn't there a, a step in there where you were, where you would have different members of the EDC talk to these people so you could address some of those? Did that not happen? I thought there was someone going to talk to every single one of the applicants. There, there, there was that step. It wasn't to every single one of them. It was, as I remember it, it was kind of hit or miss, but there was that step. And, and that was last, that started last year, I think. No, no, I don't I think. think we, Michael, you were two years ago, right? There was a couple of yeah, years, two years ago. Yeah. 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 So we made some improvements from two years ago, but Michael, to your point, I, I agree there's always room for improvement, but we did do that um, where we started like reaching out, but it the, the mechanism for how we reached out wasn't sort of an official thing, I don't think. Right. Not the, two years ago, no. I think what we, what we, so what, what we could do is, so, so what we could do is to, provide some capacity in early January if if the proposals come in by the by middle of December or the 20th just anything before you go on vacation um we could have some like open I don't know what the word is office hours where there are three EDC members and we set up three or four of those where people commit to spend 90 minutes at town hall and if anyone wants to sign up you know in advance if anyone's coming you couldn't just that's show a good up. idea Todd, didn't we talk about doing that yeah we did yeah yeah not, yeah and so the, yeah. the reason for doing it that way michael is that not everyone wa wants is not everyone will take advantage of it and yeah. many people will be un will not be taking advantage of it because they're unprepared to do it and it won't waste our time yeah. but it would give you the opportunity or someone like you to to uh to come forward and to have those discussions, realizing so, that it would achieve a better, you know, that you would likely get a better consideration. We, if you we set there. up some EDC office hours that for yeah. this Did period. You get suicide six, Todd. Yeah, yeah. that's where there I'll be. Go. I love that yeah. suggestion. Yeah. Pascadina. Well, I want to see if I understood. Pascadina. Hold on, Marion. If I understood what you were saying is that, you know, you heard, you know, we had the sort of the two part process, right? We asked questions and then we went and we talked through all the, the, the applications, and I think what I heard you say was that you heard questions come up in that discussion right. that you could have answered, and I don't know that the office hours solves that. No, no, that's a very good point. Yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah, the, 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 it's the still problem, community engagement, though, which yes. is good. Yeah. the the problem. Yeah, the the, yeah, the problem. She makes a very, very good point. It is a very good point. But, but However, maybe let me counter it and just say that maybe in those office hours, if we have discussion to put some questions or could have some review of what their application is in advance, maybe those more obvious questions could come up in that conversation, right? So it's not left to the last meeting. Michael, I think, again, I think some of what you experienced yeah. two years ago was corrected last year and last year you would have had the opportunity to have that dialogue because there was definitely room there was that dialogue last year no, so no. i th i think we already we fixed that part of the problem no, uh, I and, I and i think that the um this piece that we're just talking about kind of um helps the helps us be prepared to um, support the community member in their application process. So we know what support they need when <clears throat> when they come in to sit down, you know. De Deborah, I don't know that that's exactly correct. I think what Marion is talking about is I believe, and I I don't, I mean, I, none of us seems like- I was remember. saying I, Michael, not Marion, yeah. No, 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 Marion's point was oh. that last year, I think, you think anyway. I think. We had a we we had deliberations, right? We know we had questions and answers, and then we had deliberations, like some other boards. And you know, technically, when you're doing deliberations, the applicants can't talk. It's deliberations. Only EDC members can talk. And what I think, Michael, correct us. Are you saying that during those deliberations, 
you know, Marion would say, well, I really don't think this is worth it if it's only $10. And you know it was only $5, but you couldn't say because we were in deliberations. And Marion kept saying it was I wish I knew, you know, whether this really worked and you knew that you had proof, you know, right, right. data yeah. to show that it worked. And yeah. So but, in other words, and the go ahead, Deborah. But I remember last year in those moments that the applicant was in the room and we would turn to them and ask them. My goal was two years ago. That's that's yeah, that's back yeah. to that. Yeah, I mean, so I, I do remember as we deliberated when those questions came up, we were able to turn to somebody and say, was it five or was it 10? You think that's right? I think that's right. Yeah. Okay, well then yeah. if that's the case, then the suggestion of office hours would address. Right. And, and, and to further, yeah. what Michael's saying is that if he was able to riff with us, he wouldn't right. feel blindsided by some of the things that might seem obvious to us, but didn't seem obvious to him for whatever reason, or vice versa, and just have the process be more fluid and effective. So, does, so if that's the case, then does the concept that we can we could figure out the details, uh, but the, basically the concept of an early January office hour period. So applications on by December fifteenth or twentieth. Uh, let's just say the fifteenth. That gives people two months if we get this out within ten days or within a week. Uh, we have coffee or something and people can come in and office and, hours yeah. sometime in the first half of January and the annual meeting sometime in the second half of January. Does that work for everybody? Sure. John, you're talking about office hours with a full EDC or, or no, a couple. No, I don't okay, so, there. so then I think we should make sure that the full EDC has an opportunity to um, to uh, um, Ask um, questions for that uh, the the group that's going to be doing the office hours, because yeah. there's no point in having the three people's opinions there, and and we find that three other people who weren't there have have uh, other questions. Well, the, the solution there. the solution to that can be that those other people agree that I think that, that submitting questions in advance, knowing that Michael is coming on Thursday to office hours, submitting questions for Michael's application to to that group would be great. That you, of course the people can always show up if they if their questions were actually important to them. Too many of them. Unless Unless you're you're we have to warn it. Right. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Can I ask Todd? So, Todd? But, but yeah, so Larry, yes, a vehicle for submitting questions for applicants. Um, and, well, and also, by the way, it doesn't have to just be office hours. We could also submit questions you know, by email to directly to the applicants. We could just assemble the questions. Yeah, but we tried that last year, basically, yeah, right? right? right. And it, a lot of people didn't take advantage of it. So I think that the more you know, yeah. Woodstock approach would be to have a cup of coffee ready and people can okay. come and sit down. All right, Joe. So Larry, I'm yeah, just curious, make sure I, I'm just curious, Todd, are you going to participate in the office? Yes, hours yes, I skiing? hate skiing. I just didn't want to hang out with you. I hate skiing. Yeah. <laughs> so Larry, are you okay? That we'll basically have a way to, we'll have a process where people can submit questions to whoever's hosting the office hours. Okay, any other changes to the process? Thank you, Michael, for suggesting that. Yeah, that was pretty good. I'm happy. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, all right. Okay, so 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 October fifteenth uh, announcement using the same verbiage as last year. December fifteenth deadline. Office hours first half of January. Annual meeting second half of January. Great. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. What's the number? It's seventy this year. Sixty six. What is it? Oh, what we said was seventy thousand, a hundred seventy. No, what? what why does it seventy five stick in my head? Was it seventy five? No, it was seventy. One hundred seventy thirty. I remember. I just, I remember numbers. I don't remember anything about people or products, but I remember not. Okay, preliminary results of the communicate community survey on tourism. Do we get to do citizens' comments? Uh, sure. So I asked a lot of people if they filled it out, and they said no. You only put it in once to the um. Uh, to listserv. No, three times. No, I was in there a bunch, yeah. Okay, I only saw one. Uh, oh, okay, but, okay, but a lot of people that I talked to said they didn't know, right. never heard of it. We got 270 uh, responses so far. 10%. It's 10% yeah. of the entire population. It's a bigger percentage of the adult population. Pretty I, good. I, don't, I don't know of any survey or actually any process. Biggest survey ever. 26 years that I've had a house here where there was 270 people participated. Oh. So not even that many people cared about the children. <laughs> cared about flower pots. In any event, I, we. I, okay, I'm going to take a deep breath. And that's not, <laughs> not your fault, Susie, but you triggered me. 
There, John, John, just take it. It's oh, there's always someone who didn't hear it or didn't read it. No, 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 no. I'm not going to tell you about this process. So we, someone asked earlier that would would we please send? How are we going to promote this? So we said we'll put it in the listserv. They said, well, that's you know, that's what about people don't get the listserv? It's fine. We will mail a postcard to every one. Yeah. Raise, who raise your hand? Actually, if you if you got if you got a postcard, I don't have a mailbox. I got a one. We didn't get one. Yeah, you. I haven't gotten mail in like two weeks. I don't know what's going on. Well, yeah, I, it's I, didn't, I didn't get it until yesterday. I got it. So first of all, I just want to uh, let me just simply summarize. There are lengthy federal statutes about sending out postcards. That I believe I complied with those statutes. The first time I, the eye guy coming up the stairs. The first time I tried to comply, I did not comply. I didn't spend any money, but I wasn't, but I figured out questioning your postcard mailing. No, no, no. I'm just saying that the reason one reason why anyway, I think I think first of all, I think the answers that we have are we have enough responses to be able to draw to draw the kind of conclusion that I'm going to try to draw tonight, which is really just at the simplest level. We have an issue and we, we need to kind of investigate it further rather than we can set it aside or we or the world is coming to an end, which I would describe as the two ends of the spectrum. Some people might think, you know, this is just a handful of people coming to EDC meetings complaining. And at the other end of the spectrum, it's, you know, this is a disaster. Woodstock is about to, you know, disappear. And I think the data basically shows that it's somewhere in the middle and it's enough in the middle that we need to continue to work on the experiences that people that resident that the local community is going to have. John, you sound a little hangry right now. You should just eat a sandwich. You know. Oh no 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 no! no I'm not. Oh, you can't, you can't find that. one. You can't find one. <laughs> right. So anyway, look out for this. They, they lost these for ten days. They lost. Them. Oh, I, my packages were lost for ten days. Yeah, it's unbelievable. However, I am now good friends with both the postmaster and the person who runs the, um, uh, the post plant, plant, the post, the postal plant in White River Junction. <laughs> Yep. Who were involved in the search for my postcards? Anyway, they went out. Okay. Not mail in two days, so maybe I'll get one tomorrow. No, no, no. Yeah, hopefully. I just got it. I think I got it today. Actually. I got I got three weeks ago Vermont Standard two days ago. Yeah. All right. So I've sent out so everyone here, since there's only um Susie and Roger, so everyone on the EDC and I think Beth also, so received uh, a copy of the of the kind of uh, of the summary of the results there in the, in that document I sent you, there were 235 respondents. Uh, the postcards then started to come out and there are now 270. We got another 35 over the last few days. What's interesting about that is that the response rate was much faster with the listserv. So I'm, I'm just guessing that a lot more people read the listserv than, than read their mail. Um, oh, Carol says I got my, uh, my card yesterday. Yeah, um, but the but I we've I've analyzed the responses prior to three days ago versus since three days, and they're not significantly different. It doesn't change the conclusions. So, so I just want to kind of give you some very high level, uh, high level summary here. All of this is, well, almost all of this is in the data that you have in your packet. A couple of things are new. Again, that's just the nature of analysis. You can't you can't stop doing analysis when you send out the memo. So I've kept doing it. So this is something that I think this chart is actually in your package. This basically talks about benefits. So by the way, just in case you missed it in the memo, the um, the uh, question about uh, whether or not starting with positive questions or starting with negative questions turns out to have had no impact. Half We managed to develop a technology to allow half the people to respond with a survey with the positive questions first, and the other half of the people to respond with the survey with negative questions first. The two groups have essentially identical results. So fortunately, that wasn't didn't turn out to be an issue. This shows, first, the positive I have to start with something in this presentation, so I'm starting with the positive. I can't start with both. <laughs> and I'll just, I'm teasing. So this may be a little bit hard to see, but the blue bars at the bottom are the percentage of people who say that tourism benefits Woodstock a great deal. The orange is uh, benefits it to some extent. 
And so you can see that basically everyone understands that there's some benefit, mostly a significant benefit to tourism, to helping people, lo helping local uh, stores and restaurants survive. Um, you know, 80% of the people for the most part think that other things to some extent benefit. So people basically understand that Woodstock benefits from tourism. There is a recalcitrant group that doesn't think that that's the case and there's different aspects of, of benefit, but fundamentally, sorry, fundamentally, the community understands that there are benefits. And that's all we're gonna talk about the positive. Um, at the same time, about 40% of the respondents say that they regularly experience some of the negative effects. And the blue, again, working from the bottom, the blue is they experience whatever the particular uh, negative effect daily. The next category is weekly, then monthly. And then the yellow and the blue at the top are only during peak events, days, or rarely or never. So you can sort of look at the bottom two as regularly and the gray as in the middle and the yellow and the blue at the top as not very often. And so you can see that about 40% particularly about getting a reservation at a restaurant, finding a parking spot and traffic jams. You've got sort of 40% of the people saying, this happens to me either daily or weekly. Yeah, um, yeah, Susan. It is significant that only 38% of people said rarely or, ne or never for inappropriate behavior by visitors. That means that over 60%, yeah. uh, at least some point, have uh, experienced inappropriate behavior. You know, so that's that's an issue. Uh, all of these are, uh, yeah. I think that I think that as we go forward, one of the things we're going to need to decide is how many of these issues, which of these issues are actionable by the EDC or by other parts of the town. Um, which ones should be EDC focus on, you know, and so forth. We're we're gonna, you know, that my my hope is that we, this is the beginning of a process to pursue it. It it does give us some direction. There is a, you know, there also, by the way, is I think some, well, for sure, there is some um, expansion. I don't know what there must be some term for this in surveys. For example, one respondent basically said under inappropriate behavior that he or she observe someone pee uh, your public urination daily. <laughs> that means 365 days. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I think people, you know, however, that th 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 there's going to be some of that in here, but these numbers are big enough. Embellishment? Embellishment, maybe, yeah. Or or well, just, just not understanding the question because yeah. I haven't seen it. You know, I've complained about it a lot. This year I have not seen any public urination. There we go. Our trend is trend is positive. All right. In any event, the point I think the point is is that whether you, however you count the, you know, daily, weekly, even monthly, is is something that we should care about. Now, whether we can do a lot about some of these things, or a little, or nothing in some case, or whether we can completely solve them, I think we can't just set this aside and say this is just a handful of of people complaining. This is pretty pretty widespread. Even even thinking that maybe people who have had negative experiences are more prone to answer a survey like this because it gives them a chance to, you know, to say what they're thinking. Even that, I, I think, I think, I think these think are big numbers of people. This is, you know, this this group down here. This is a hundred, I think. If I, I think it's all great information. Now, I, I really don't know personally what to do about it. Well, we're going to come to that. Okay. Yeah. So, lastly, this this is experience, and this is the degree to which people are bothered. Uh, not exactly the same thing. Uh, in fact, you'll see in a minute how it's not the same, not precisely the same thing. But about you know twenty five ish percent of people are bothered a great deal by these problems. And that's, I think, you know, and then and then another forty, thirty five to fifty percent are bothered someone. Now, this is something that you haven't seen. This is an analysis that I did after sending the memo out, but I just want to sort of show it to you. This shows the frequency. This is rarely or peak days only, the lowest, you know, rarely. This is monthly and this is weekly or daily. And then this shows the extent to which they're bothered, not at all, bothered somewhat, bothered a great deal. So wow. even, even people who experience, so the people who experience these problems weekly or daily, not surprisingly, a, you know, 75% of them are bothered somewhat or a great deal. But even the people who are only experiencing it rarely or on peak days are bothered 
by it. Half of them are not bothered by it at all, but 60% of them are somewhat bothered. Um, and interestingly, th this group up here is bothered a great deal, even though they rarely experience it. I don't know what you would call that segment, but. You could call it void, void people staying home because they don't feel like they can go out. We, it could be an explanation. It could be, yeah. I, it could also be that that if if we shut the you know if we shut the town down and reverted it to the 1930s, they would still be bothered. I, my, yeah, my, my instinct is those eight people are just bothered. But in any event, the point is is that is that people, you know, this this is the number of people here. This is a lot of people who say that they're bothered somewhat. And you know, 50 people or 60 people, 55 people are, you know, bothered a lot. Whoops, sorry. So what do we do about it? I think. Wait, wait, wait. But what does bothered mean? Does whatever, it mean that you know whatever the recipient it, 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 response it, it reduces their um, tendency to go downtown. Does it means what they it means what the person was thinking when they answered the question? Yeah. Did you ask that question? Because that's an yeah. important question. What does bothered mean? Yeah. What does it mean to no, be bothered? Are you bothered? Because, um, we we did. tourism and crowds does it reduce people's willingness to participate in civic life? We did not ask that question. Yeah. Yeah. We did not. I'm just curious. I mean, I, I think that'd be, that'd be, it'd be interesting to know what, you know, what, that, what do you mean by that? That means you don't want to go downtown? Is that what it means? Or I does think, it mean that, you know, you're the, fed up with the town and just... Subjective question like that, but you yeah. can ask, does this prevent yeah. you from going yeah. downtown? You, you, you can ask exact, I think, the questions we ask. If what you're trying to determine is, should we figure out what to do about these things or not? Yeah. Okay. That's the question we're trying to All determine, right. I, I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so that's why, I, yeah. So I think the conclusion is yes, we should do we should do something about these things. And so the next step is, wow. what what does that look like? And yeah. so right. So these are the questions we ask, the things we ask about restaurant access, parking availability, traffic, crowded sidewalks, long lines, and inappropriate behavior. This is sort of roughly in the order in which they were felt to be important. They're all, as Susie points out, there's still a good number of people who are concerned about inappropriate visitor behavior. Not a majority, it's a lot concerned, but still enough. Yeah. But but these numbers up here are, are the ones which had the highest level of concern. There were a large number of open-ended comments, 950 individual items from about 100 people. So if someone might say, you know, I, I don't like the traffic and I do like having a job because of this tourism and I don't like the food, whatever, that counts as three. So I have not gotten through the 947 yet. But broadly speaking, these are another six or seven things which for which we don't have measurement other than people mentioned them. Mm -hmm. Stores not catering to locals, diversity, um, yeah, yeah. No, no. Sorry, this this is not this is wrong. This shouldn't be there. Pedestrian behavior, bike riders, pet behavior, parking behavior, trash overflow. There's a couple of other pet behavior: dog barking or peeing or yeah, anything that a dog could do. Was be important. So it has to be a dog. So, but I think I think the reason I put this list up is. I don't think we have any data to suggest. We did not ask about these things on the right. I don't think on the right, this on list right. on the right, yeah. but from the comments, we don't have data to suggest how important those issues those, are. Those were unsolicited comments. Correct. Exactly. Well, they were solicited. You, you were they, were, they were unsolicited topics. They were common. Oh, they you. came up, you know, yeah. basically there were two questions on the positive and the negative side. These are just the negatives. Yeah. It was, is there anything else other than the things on the left? Yeah, what else is on your mind? What, yeah. Well, no, is there anything else that negatively affected yeah. you know, from tourism? And yeah. this is what the list was. And John, that was from half the people? No, it less, I, I think there were about 100 out of 270 who made negative comments and about, you know, no, it's less than half the people, and slightly more made negative comments than positive. But like a third. There, were, there were a good number of both. So this yeah. seems like it's a, you know, this comments thing, and even to a certain degree, inappropriate visitor behavior. Sounds like, you know, the next step should be like a focus group to get a better understanding of that. And I would imagine that 
people who live along the Taurus route had more issues with, like, you would, you know, like, would have more issues with inappropriate behavior than perhaps somebody who lives away from right. the forest traffic. So getting that kind of granularity will help. In your house, we have, my house. we have that granularity. The, the overall sentiment, which is not, you're asking a more specific question, but the overall sentiment between people who live in the village and people who live outside the village was exactly the same. It was identical. But I'm talking but about in the village? With, like within the village, people who live, like my house is right along right. the street, right? So I'm likely to experience yes. drunk tourists climbing into my garden than somebody who lives. Who doesn't have a garden where people are walking. Agree. Yeah. And I promise so. I'll never do it again. <laughs> to me, right. So to me, how we, how we should proceed is I, I would like to suggest, and this is just, I'm just one person, I'm, but I've sort of wanted to put this forward that we that we basically um well let me sort of skip over here uh that we that we basically can reflect on these questions and at our next meeting try to try to uh decide exactly what to do between now and then what i would like to do is because we promised is get the other surveys launched because I think the visitor survey in particular, well, well, both surveys I think are going to be very important, but I think the visitor survey is going to be along these lines. It's going to either confirm or not confirm what we all think visitors are thinking yep. and hold a public meeting to share the results of this survey. And depending on the timing of the visitor survey, the two together, if we think we can get it done, if, if, I wouldn't like, if, if we're going to have to wait a week or 10, I, we have to talk, Greta, we have to talk to figure out what the timing of getting the visitor survey out is. But I think we need to think about what should we try to accomplish, which of the concerns that have been raised are feasible to address. Here's a great example, traffic. I mean, yeah, can what we- What can we do about that? Right, if, the, if we decide that we can't do anything about it, we, yeah. so how would we, what would we do? Um, let's just take two things, parking and restaurants. I mean, one can imagine, I think, quite significant impact that we could have on either or both of those issues. Um, what might it cost to do that? This is work that we'll need to do. What process, how should we go about answering what should we try to accomplish? What should we do? Is this an EDC role? I think for some of the concerns it is. Traffic, I think it isn't. Yeah. Um, who else should be involved? Should we should we be involving the planning commission or this obviously the select board? Should we be involved the village trustees who don't normally have a role in our work? Um, are there other folks? How should the community be involved? Should we have, should we break up, you know, should there be a parking team and a restaurant team and a, or should whatever, lots of different options. And when should we do this? Should we start now? I think so. What if we're not done by, Feb by when the marketing funding runs out at the end of February? Uh, I don't think we will be done. So what should we do? But I don't think what we should decide, I don't think we should figure out this year, we should not figure out the answer to that question in the meeting. I think we need to figure out the answer to the question, what if we're not done? What, what if we don't know these things before that? I, and should we pursue multiple concerns or, or one? Can I ask a quick question? I'm, I'm not clear on what you were yes. just saying. Okay, let me, let me I, I think it's because I skipped a page. And so let me go back and explain it. What, what, uh, the reason I'm asking that question is, I think what this data suggests that we need is that is that we need to rethink the subtle the, the specifics of what our mark of what we've been calling our marketing objective. We've been saying that we want to market Woodstock. I think what we want to say, I think what we want to say is something that's a little bit more nuanced than that. I think what what I would like us to say, and I'm not suggesting we decide this tonight, um, but I, is that we what we want to do is that our prior these are our five priorities, right? Increasing supply of workforce housing, childcare supply, rejuvenating, supporting and grow local events, and marketing Woodstock. I think what we ought to say is instead is keep two through five the same. Number one is to develop a vibrant tourism economy that provides visitors, residents, and merchants with an excellent experience. And what I think that means in practice is that we would continue to have an objective of marketing Woodstock because without 
Woodstock, you can't have a vibrant, without marketing Woodstock, you can't have a vibrant tourism industry. However we do that, whatever we have the right platform, how much we spend on it, whatever. But that in addition to that, we have another aspect of our tourism priority, which is improving the experience of those three segments, making sure that the merchants have a good experience, making sure the residents have a good experience, making sure the visitors have a good experience. And I think, as I said in my memo, that every dollar we spend on improving the experience, we can't spend on either marketing Woodstock or childcare or whatever. We have a finite sum. And any dollars we spend on marketing Woodstock, we can't spend on improving the, the visitor experience or the resident experience or childcare or whatever. And so that's why, Roger, I link this to our February discussion, is that I, I think that we need to have a tourism, I think we need to have a tourism priority and a tourism budget and, and allocate dollars to the two parts of tourism. Previously, we've been mostly, almost entirely, alloc not, not entirely, because we did like Teagle's Landing, which has really improved the experience. But we've, we've spent significantly more money on marketing Woodstock. And depending on the answers to these questions, what should we try to accomplish? You know, for example, it, you know, if we decide to build an, an underground parking garage, I don't think we're going to have any money left for marketing or for anything else, by the way. And I don't think we're going to build an underground parking garage. So I think the reason to be shingled, <laughs> the reason, right. The reason why I, I brought up this point about what, what if we're not done is I think based on this survey, there's no way that we will be able to do in February, what we did last year, which is look, we don't, our choice is to shut the platform down or to spend a hundred thousand dollars, which is sort of the minimum it takes to run this particular platform. I don't think at the last meeting, last year what we said was we you know we, we have to do it because we don't have a plan b we don't have a plan c there's either shut it down to zero or or run it at full at, at hundred thousand which is minimum uh, i don't think with these results we will that that will work this year and so i think we have to start figuring out plan b that's what you suggest plan c plan a was shut it plan a was funded Plan B was shut it down. Yeah, on Plan C. Okay. Uh, I, you know, I, I understand. I, I'm just saying that we that at the last year we didn't we we didn't have Plan C, and I'm not saying we should have. I'm not saying we should pursue Plan C. I'm not saying we should pr pursue Plan A or B. There's no dollars put in these boxes and so forth. I'm just proposing that one of the things that we do, one of the questions we start to think about now in October, that what if we're not done answering these other questions by February. What if we don't know yet what 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 ex what other funds we need for yes, the experience side? So anyway, that's those are those are my thoughts. And this is how I think again, we don't have to answer these questions tonight, but I just want to introduce these to you all reflect on these. And so at our next meeting we can really dig into this and decide how to do it. Joe. And I, my feeling is simply by virtue of the fact that we conducted these surveys. What we've done by conducting these surveys, and we wouldn't have done if we hadn't, is we are opening up conversation about alternatives to the marketing issue that we, marketing program that we've already established, and other alternatives of way of handling what goes on in our town, in our town, in terms, you know, recognizing that we are a tourist-based economy. Okay, recognize that and having the conversation around that now, which we never did before at this at this level. And I think I think it's been worth every wait, bit wait, wait, of hold on a second. It's been worth every bit of energy, time, and if whatever little money we spent on conducting these surveys, it's 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 been well worth it. I, and I applaud the whole concept. I'm gonna say Susie, sorry, Todd and then Susie. Awesome. Yeah, I think um, I think if we do discuss a plan C, it has to have a lot of um, heads up on what the stopgap funding amount might be, might be, because that's what we had to do in a previous session where we just allocated, I think, like it was 40000 or something to keep it going for X amount of time. So I think whoever's running this machine needs to start thinking about that sort of sooner than later. So that, you know, we're not 
caught off guard at a last minute meeting where it's going to be turn the faucet off or not and not not have a number on and and a and and a, a cause and effect of what that number means. You know what I'm saying? I disagree. I think we should come up with the ideas first and then discuss about the money and what we can afford, what, what we can't afford, or how much of the idea that we can implement. The That's idea should right. come first. Yeah, no, I, I think that, I, I don't think you're disagreeing. We're, it, 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 I think we're talking about developing a, a plan C, yeah. knowing what plan C would cost, not whether we should do it or not. I, I, so so I, I, these ideas... Yeah, yeah, but I think the ideas come first. Then we can decide if we can afford it. I think one of the um, issues I have with this discussion is it's always a given that, you know, Woodstock is a tourist town. Woodstock is a town where tourism is important, but so are all the people, like half the people on the call, like us, who work um, remotely and we, you know, we bring in a lot of money from out of um, state, in my case, out of the country, and I bring it in and I spend it in here. And in terms of tax contributions, I mean, residents are an extremely important part of the economy. And so I just would like all these discussions to be based on, you know, you know, that residents are as equally important to the economy as tourism. <laughs> Uh, hold on a second. Roger. Um, so I have a couple of points. And one, I think all these are great questions. And to be honest, I'm I'm much more impressed with the outcome of this survey than I thought it would be. So congratulations. Um, I think what you're lacking a bit is a little bit of contextualization. I think um, at, the, at the last budget meeting I went to, I think you made a very smart point, which is, if this town is going to be able to afford what it needs to do, it has to grow its population. It's very questionable to me whether the town can grow its population only based on a real estate and a tourist economy, especially when people are spending multi-millions of dollars on houses and then spending other multi-millions of dollars fixing up those houses. So one thing that I think needs to be added to the conversation is how do we diversify this economy? How do we, and I realize that's a very hard question. Um, so that I, I think we need to, to really work on diversifying the economy as part of this entire conversation. And again, it's a long-term thing and all of the housing things obviously are gonna affect that because how do you diversify the economy when nobody can afford to buy a house? Then the other thing about, as, as you know, I have been, non-supportive of, of most of what the EDC has done in terms of marketing. I think it's been ineffective and highly expensive for what you get. I was sent you sometime after February, Plan C. Yeah. Um, and I'm not expecting it to be adopted, but I'm gonna suggest that on marketing, you get back to basics. You spend about $45,000 a year running a website, working, doing some outreach, doing whatever kind of ads you you can do on social media or elsewhere. And it can be much cheaper and, and much smarter if we get back to the basics on what we're doing in marketing. And then you have more money to spend on I have no idea what whatever is appropriate for, for the EDC to mitigate some of the downsides of tourism. All right. Let me just suggest, Patrick, sorry, I see your hand is the same color as the lighting. So I, I may have missed you before, but I'm going to call Patrick. But I just want to say after Patrick's comment, I'm sure he's going to want to comment on this. Let's keep after this, his comment, let's keep the discussion of what the right marketing program is for not for tonight, because yeah. it's, I, okay. but, but, but would you share that, would you share the plan? Greta is now on the marketing committee, as is Patrick. Would you share that plan with Greta and Patrick? Sure. I don't know if they have their emails. Are they on uh, the website? Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure you Okay. Know. Patrick? Put it yeah, make sure you get my new one, because the, the uh, Sleep Woodstock one's no oh. longer. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, just FYI, uh, the the program that we set up does do a lot of marketing, does do a lot of ads, does all of that stuff, emails. It does a lot. I don't think people truly understand what it does and what it's what we're building it to do now, which is to help advertise events and uh, specifically and to help advertise businesses specifically, particularly on the the times when the businesses say they really need help. Uh, and it's $100,000 to run it. Uh, 
you know, and I do agree with you, Roger. I I agree with you before. The website needs work. Uh, you know, and we've been working on the content all year long, uh, cleaning the the pages up and stuff. I personally don't like the platform it's on. I think it's cumbersome. I think it's hard to navigate. Uh, that's a different issue. Uh, but just keep in mind, uh, there is not a stopgap. You either are going to do the program or you're not because they're not going to do it unless they have a commitment for a year because uh, it just doesn't make sense for them to do that. So I agree. Keep right. that in mind, right? It's a yes or no question. Right. Right. Oh, sorry. Susie and then Mary. Oh, sorry. I just... I was going to... Susie. Um, I think we should talk about, you know, in this whole discussion, how do we build resiliency yeah. into the um, economy? Um, I personally think that setting a goal, like, um, you know, that the local stores make a attempt to, to get 50% or so of their revenues um, from locals, um, you know, or, or something like yeah. that. I mean, just building resiliency. And I think that you know, one of the ways to do that is to do that locals do want to shop downtown. The, the, um, uh, so, okay, so, well, so I think that we're, I hope that we're, I think the most important thing to agree to tonight, and we don't have, is, is for Greta and Patrick also, but Greta, um, as the official EDC member to make sure that by February, we have a range of plans, understanding that Patrick, that, that some of those plans may not include continuing to run the platform. It may be, you know, something that Roger was suggesting. I, and I, I'm not opining on what to do. None of, I, I don't have enough information at all to opine. I'm just saying, I just want to be clear that we, we need to have a choice. We need to have a third choice between run the platform, targeted whatever the platform's going to be targeted to, businesses, events, individual visitors, whatever, or not run it. There's no question. We all agree that that those are the two options with the platform because class four isn't rationally going to going to you know do. They're only going to do one of those two things. So we may need to have a third. We may need to have a third option. I don't think anybody's questioning. No, 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 no one is. I know. I mean, I think we're in agreement on that, right? I, I just want to make sure. Greta, do you want to comment? Yeah, I just to say that I'm just getting caught up now with the class four people. I just met Tim, our particular um point person yesterday via Zoom. And um I will definitely I already said that to him. One of the things we have to do is really make sure we're we're prepared for early 2024 and knowing um that there are some different options. And if it's not with class four, then um, you know, we'll we'll definitely have a, a plan C. Okay. Uh, no, Charles also, John and I had a really good meeting with Charles Kahn from class four, and he's definitely on the same page with so many of the, um, he's a local and on the same page with a lot of us thinking that the website isn't doing any justice to the town. And that is definitely one thing that needs a lot of investment for next year. And that's where I'll leave it. Um, Earlier, I just want to quickly comment. Earlier, I said diversify whatever shouldn't be on the list. That I was mis, I, I, I was misremembering what the word diversify meant. It meant exactly Roger, what you and, and Susie, what you were talking about about resilience or diversifying the economy. A number of people made the points that we need to find a way to, or that they wanted the economy. I, maybe. <laughs> They wanted the economy to serve locals and not be just based on tourism and real estate. Yeah. 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 And then it's in the plot where, you know, it's a major crisis. Right. So I, 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 um, I think that, that um, even though we didn't ask that question, it did come up uh, in some comments. And I agree that uh, we don't have to decide this tonight, but I am inclined to support, I, what I'm imagining is several issues that we decide we can deal with. I think I think they should include parking. I think they should include food. I think they could include or should include diversifying the economy. I might be just those three. We can, again, we'll have that discussion at the next meeting, if it's okay, because it's 820. But um, I will say that the nature 
that 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 discussion that that discussion about diversifying the economy is i think going to be very interesting and very different from parking and uh, and food because i think all of us would i hope would agree that with a moderate with some amount of money we can really have an impact on the first two i personally feel very strongly that there that woodstock has zero options this is my personal belief that, that we have no options with respect to diversifying the economy that people of communities of our size don't decide don't get to decide or even have a vote as to what our economy is the global and the national economy impose on us what our economy can be and you either get something in our case real estate and, and tourism or you get nothing and your bridgewater yeah no no, no. and so i think it's going to be i think it's going to be a very interesting discussion and it's going to be very different in its nature from the other two but i think us but i think we need to discuss it because i think yes. that that it it relates to you know there's lots of different ways of people saying this like why can't i buy a dish towel at uh, you know at, uh, you know and what they mean is why can't i buy a dish towel at locally when i can park right in front of it and pay the same price i can yeah, exactly and, yeah but, and but that's what they mean and anyway in event i think it's going to be really interesting and i think that there are actually some things that we could do to deal with part of this problem um so i, I have some uh, yeah so it's going to be anyway sorry i'm ranting here i, I think it's going to be very issue so i think next time what we the most important things to do now are just please just digest that last page of these are the questions we need to think about. How do we proceed from here? What do we focus on? Which issues? How do we do it? Who do we need to be involved? And I think the other thing that so we're preparing for that a month from now. And the other thing is to give Greta and Patrick enough time to say, OK, look, you've got about four months. If there's a possibility, we're going to be right in the middle of that whole thing in February and we're not going to be in a position. We're going to have to decide, is it is it the plan A, plan B? That was our decision last year. I'd like us to have a plan C this year in case we decide that plan A or plan B is not the right one. So that's really all we, is, is everyone on board with that outcome of tonight? Yep. Yes. And that, and that, by the way, is what I think the purpose of the survey was. And I think that for that purpose, we have enough respondents, we have enough questions. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Right. right. That, that's great. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's what we needed to get to for, for now. I John. still can't believe that Roger liked the survey. It's fascinating. He didn't say like it. He didn't say like it. He said it exceeded his expectations. Uh, that's true. Good point. It's not the same, it's not the same thing. He was, he was a little blue in the chart. He was a little blue. <laughs> uh, John, one of the things that I think we need to do, too, is uh, have a point where, where Greta and I can, can describe to the, to the EDC board what exactly we're doing with the platform and the marketing because the platform is just the engine the stuff we're doing with it i think people don't understand and i think that message needs to be had so that you can understand what we're actually paying for uh you know when i started this the idea was to build a platform that we could build upon to use you know the platform to market to and i think what i have done a terrible job of doing is is explaining what exactly we're doing uh, and and you know in the breadth of work that's being done by class four. Yeah, I I I, I think that understanding the platform, I, I, that's I think that's fine to, to definitely put that on the agenda. Why don't you figure out when uh, when we should do that? I would probably do that nearer the end of this four month period than the beginning. Um, but it's up to you. Uh, you know, I, I think it it it. Um, but anyway, it's not, it, I shouldn't. I actually withdraw that comment. When I, the, I think that might be better. Do it. Might be better. Do it a little earlier. I think. So whatever. People, however. But, however you want. I, I withdraw my comment. What, yeah. Whatever. No, that's fine. And then, uh, I think Greta. Greta and I. We talked about the survey. Uh, and Greta, why don't you lead that discussion? Yeah, that's the last. This is the last item: the visitor survey. And the merchant can, can I can I just throw in just thank you, John. You've done a lot of massaging of the the uh, uh, you know what we've learned from these surveys, and I think you deserve a, a great vote of uh, yeah a, applause for all that effort you've well, done. Like, it made it very great. easy to look at. All right, thanks. No, I'm happy. I was happy to do it. Yeah. So. Chat Chat GPT really did a great job making that chart <laughs> for you. <laughs> yeah. All right, Greta. Last item on the agenda. So uh, specifically, well, 
it's I I was one of the people who uh, originally did the the merchant survey. And so that's kind of the one that I'm more um, familiar with. But now that I'm on the marketing um, team, I we would I just spoke with um, the crew. Well, the the small group, um, the working group about the visitor survey and how we can get that out. And I think that Tim from class four. Um, is trying to figure out how best uh, to format it. And, you know, he was looking at the the one that you formatted for the for the local community, um, which looked great. The The visitor survey is much shorter, so hopefully it's a little bit simplified. Um, and looking at the question specifically in our group, we um, felt, I know it's not in front of everyone here in the meeting, but um, it's a short survey. There are only seven questions. And the last one saying, um, you know, something to the effect of you can think of one thing to make Woodstock more appealing. What would it be? And we kind of thought that that was a little bit um, we, we could simplify that language and just make it simple. Like, is there one thing about Woodstock you would change or something like that? Um, just kind of keep it a little a little bit more to the point um, instead of saying more appealing, like already putting them up for thinking Woodstock isn't already appealing. Um so anyway, we had that discussion. The it looks like it's ready to go. Um, just curious how we should get it out there, and um, the team also had a, a suggestion um, that maybe there would be some sort of incentive to these visitors. You know, there's something connected, like a not necessarily a coupon code, but something along those lines. That's something that it, to give them incentivize them to actually fill out the survey and take the time. So that's that's kind of where we're at with that. But um John, did you format that? The, 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 did the you format the, 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 the not the visitor one, the uh the the uh townspeople one? It's just done on, on Microsoft Forms. Because if you do that again on this one, we'll just use the link uh and we can we can send this out to all of the people who have who have uh, signed up for the platform, you know, for, that we've collected names for, and this can go out as a, as an individual email asking them for their, uh, their feedback, uh, and basically go down two paths. Uh, if have they been to Woodstock, then they go down the the questions. If they haven't been to Woodstock, then maybe we ask a different set of questions of, you know, kind of like why not? Do we see this in the future? Uh, and get a little bit of of information both ways. Uh, it's very easy to set up a similar form for for that the, that short serve the short visitor survey. Um, but if we do that, I think technically we lose. I don't know how to connect. We lose the identification of the person. Um, is that is that critical? I don't know. Uh, it, 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 uh, not. It's not as important as getting this done. I think if we could, if if this is simply sending out forty thousand emails or or taking forty thousand people through that little tree, and then we get the twenty six thousand that have been here, and yeah. it, I think having the results of the visitor survey at the same meeting as we have the results of the resident survey is going to be important. And I think we need to do that in October. So yeah. If that's, if that's the case, then then the fastest thing to do would be to do just what you guys said, and I can I can have this set up by you know tomorrow night. Yeah, let me know that, and I will I will uh, uh, work with Greta and Tim uh, to figure out what to you know how we send this out. Uh, you know, but we can send out an email. Literally, keep it simple. We can have it out very quickly. So, so Greta, I'll, if, unless anyone objects, I, I we went through you know public meetings when we talked about those questionnaires and what the question should be and so forth. I don't have any personally. I don't have any. I, I wouldn't want to change the questions for the people who came to Woodstock from those seven or nine. But I don't mind if you change the wording to, to according to what you described. However, you think is a better wording. Does anyone object to that? I mean, rather than talking about it like we're proving it or whatever. Fine. I mean, the gist of what you. You like doing. me to read the exact? No, 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 no. <laughs> Just go ahead and do it. it, it okay. Run, run with it, Greta. Yeah, that's fine. Because the intent of the question is the same. So if that's the case, then Greta, I'll give you uh, tomorrow night, I can give you, um, or so sometime over the weekend, then I can give you the form um, and you can just send me any edits that are needed or if you want um, for that last question or, or whatever, whenever it is. I don't think I can give you, 
I don't think I can easily give you the ability to edit the form with me. If I can, I will. Um, <laughs> That's great. And also Beth, um, you know, they see a lot of people in the visitor center. So maybe we can have um, printed out surveys there. That's Similar. A, that's an idea. I would, I would drop. I would drop the idea of an incentive. Um, I think it just that's going to slow down the process and um, let just get it out. Yeah. I think what we could do is, if we don't get enough response, we could then reconsider that. Put a QR code in the visitor center. Oh, that's yeah, a good that would be better. Yeah, QR, QR code. code sounds like a good idea. Yeah, because if you if John does the form the way he did the. Uh, the resident one, then a paper form is not going to be. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. Great. So that was yeah, and then uh, let let the, Greta. I know you're closer to the merchant survey. I think maybe you and Beth could just discuss that. And and I mean we've agreed on the survey. It, 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 I don't know where it. I don't know what the issues are, and we don't need to discuss them tonight. But if there are issues, if you can come, either either launch it or come back to us next month and and ask for input and and guidance on on any of the issues. Is that all right? Or or are there issues that you know of? Or yeah, that's great. No, I think uh, we had a couple versions of it, and um, it was passed by everyone on the EDC. The most recent simple version, and I think we should just get it out to the merchants and. Great. Okay. All I'll right. talk to you about how to how to get it out okay so that's no that's it that's our agenda are there any other any other comments i'm moving to adjourn all right motion to adjourn is there a second second all in favor aye no. any opposed Done. all right thanks everybody Good thanks a lot everyone I appreciate it thank you greta, before you go can you can you call me tomorrow did you just say greta yes yes Give me a call tomorrow. I do want to go over a couple of things with you, right? Thank you.